What's up, y'all? It's circling, but I think I'm live, so I'm gonna start chatting. I am super excited to be here. I have not gone solo live in the Facebook group in a while, other than maybe when I'm on the move. Um, but I have been dropping some information to you guys. I've been sending some love your way. I've been sending some just um, quiet moments and kind of reflecting and using you all as a space to drop my journals even outside of Instagram uh, because I don't even know how many people see the algorithm anymore or see posts anymore and so I thought you know I need to be more invested here one because you guys are my ride or dies and also because it helps me generate uh, more feedback for you all and more um, fruition of what's to come so I see some live eyes you guys can drop me some comments say hey uh, hopefully this lands with you but this morning I was on my Peloton and preach, and I don't know if you guys have seen that, but it's 6 a.m. almost every day. If I have access to the Peloton, meaning I am home and not traveling, I'm jumping on and just sharing what my quiet times have been about. And I've had so much fun doing it. So I wake up, I get my coffee, I am having just quiet time in the Word, in the new book that I'm reading, in multiple books, as you might listen and hear, I read a lot. So I'm constantly um, consuming information, but the most important part of that consumption is digestion and then delivery, right? And this is not what I intended to share with you, but I think even as we go to conferences, which I did last week and wasn't able to be on the Peloton and I missed it so much, I missed interacting with you guys first thing in the morning was understanding that we sometimes are fire hosed, right? We're fire hosed with information at a conference. It often feels like a fire hose because uh, it's just inundation, inundation. Or even if you're reading books and like me, I am reading, I think, six books right now at the same time. So I do that intentionally because I want to hear from different voices simultaneously so I'm not only sitting with that one perception or that one understanding. Additionally, I really like to have faith-oriented ones and business-oriented ones open at the same time. And then some pleasure reading as well. So like I'm reading Will right now from Will Smith. Uh, it's pleasure reading and also personal development, right? He's teaching uh, his own perspective and lens through his testimony. However, the way, reason I came on this morning, beyond just marking your calendar for six o'clock, I'm live on Clubhouse and live on IGTV at the same time. And yes, you get to ride your Peloton with me. So if you have a Peloton or you wanna go running and work out with me, um, you'll hear me laboriously breathing. And, and it's a very good public speaking practice and tactic that I am coming to find, taking breaths when need, taking pause when need, while also working my way through the conversation and the workout at the same time. But this morning, I was talking about a new book that I just opened this morning. I had just freshly opened the bind. There's nothing better than that. I actually intend to have a library at some point uh, that people can come and just kind of really check out and explore. And I'm sure it'll be a part of my retreat habitation wherever my husband and I decide to do that. Um, but for now, I'm just going to share with you every time I open a new binding. And this one's going to be really good. Uh, it's by Tom Ziegler, Zig Ziegler's son. And it's called uh, Choose to win I believe choose to win it's not in my line of sight right now but it's really good thus far and if you don't know the Ziegler family or the Ziegler foundation they do speak to God even though they're also speaking to the greater population and so I love that side of when I read the book I get to talk into my faith and lean into my faith and explore that as well uh, so he was talking about something called the Trinity transformation which of course piqued my interest because of the Trinity and I'm thinking Father, Son, Holy Spirit, what is he going to share? And he started sharing about desire, hope, and grit. What does that mean? How does that apply to you? Especially in the beginning of the new year, it was talking about goals. It was talking about how we activate every single day and you know activation is my heart set. And so it was basically saying that desire is the first element of achievement or success or movement even. And so you have something that's dropped in your spirit. It's often a God dream is what I like to call them or a God wink or an intuitive intelligence, meaning God is literally dropping it into your spirit. And it's a prompting. It's an understanding that I am meant to do something, whatever that desire is. Maybe it's to marry. Uh, maybe it's to have a child. Maybe it's to start a business. Maybe it's to host a retreat or a conference or write a book, right? Or speak on stages, whatever that desired prompting is. The very next one is hope. 
And the hope is what he calls the, the motivator, the activation piece. So we can sit in desire, which is ultimately sitting in dreaming, wishing maybe, all at the same time, and often even potentially praying, right? I'm just praying for this thing. I'm praying for this desire to come to fruition. And yet, where's the motion? Where's the movement? We know biblically that in every miracle, ever given, um, every miracle ever exampled in the Bible, specifically with Jesus, but also with the disciples thereafter, uh, there was an action that transpired after the desire. So the lame man wanted to be able to walk. The blind man wanted to see, right? We want this thing. We desire something. But before every miracle, there was action, even before the miracle was given. And therefore, the action, the request on behalf of the recipient of the miracle was that they not only speak out to say, yes, I want this, this is what I need. So they voiced the desire and then they acted, they moved, they hoped. Hope is an action. They hoped toward the outcome. And so let's give an example of the lame man again is he said, do you want to get well, right? Do you want to be able to walk? He made him voice it first and then he said, good, pick up your mat and go. So he didn't say you're healed and miraculously, boom, it's done. He made him do something. He activated him. And in that activation, in the standing of his faith arised, right? And so it's this understanding that we have to desire, move into action through the hope, and then with Zig Ziglar and Tom Ziglar's understanding of the last piece, it's that grit. They both speak to this. And I am not a hustle kind of person, right? I don't believe in the hustle. I think hustle eliminates rest. And I think rest is really important. I think Sabbath is very important. I think having a spirit of rest, even if you're moving, is also really important. It's been something I've been dissecting and developing over the last several years is how can you do it all, they say, right? How are you moving so fast? I've actually had people tell me that I'm going to burn out and I'm going to potentially experience adrenal fatigue or that there's no way I could maintain the pace that I'm at. That was two years ago, by the way, that conversation. And I am still moving, if not at a faster pace. And so it's this understanding that it's a Holy Spirit leniency, leniency, leaning into, not leniency, leaning into that allows me to do this amazing thing, right? And these amazing things. But grit is a different word. I like grit. Ironically, I was um, looking at my desk earlier and I have a beautiful friend by the name of Gina. Let's see if I can get you into focus. Where are you? There it is. Can you see it? It doesn't want to focus, but it says grit and grace. And um, it's a wellness for mind, body and soul. It's a new business that she's activating herself. She'll be at the retreat in a couple of weeks, the second time at the retreat in Mexico, a different side of Mexico. We do have two beds left, by the way, if those listening are interested. And you have a spur of the moment desire and hope, which is going to move you into coming and grit to get to Mexico. I'd love to have you there. Um, But this idea of grit is perseverance. This idea of grit is resilience. And I have a dear friend named Amberly Lago who was just speaking at the event this past week. And she's also spoken at Embrace Your Ambition in the past. She's just an amazing woman of God and has such joy about her. And she actually speaks to pace, which I was just talking about. But pace aligned to grit, I believe, is a God-fearing, God-founded understanding of activation. We do have to move. We do have to do. And it's, of course, a a component of being, and I get that fully. I want you to be in your identity while also activated in your identity. Just because I have a desire and I hope and wish doesn't mean that any of that will come to fruition if I am not in the state of moving, in the state of momentum, in the state of going after the goal. If he never stood up and walked and went, the miracle wouldn't have been such. So it's so necessary for us to understand that Tom Ziegler's example of this Trinity transformation is it's good. It's pretty good. Uh, I, I thought through a bit more. How would I decipher this? I think it's important when you're given information that you actually chew on it a bit. What does it mean to you? Is it accurate? Does it sit well with you? Is there a way that you would maneuver it a bit, especially as a Christian entrepreneur that, that premises itself more in the foundation of the Bible? And that's really my 
understanding and apply it to our business practices and also to be in the sense of energy and pace and that space of intuition that I mentioned earlier, which is an exploratory thing, right? And, and the word is living and therefore with that alive factor, things are ebbing and flowing all of the time based on the season you're in, based on your sense of awareness, based on uh, where your feet are planted during that season. And so God is always speaking and because he's always speaking, I'm always exploring. I am always leaning in. I'm always trying, um, not trying, doing, right? Language is important. I am always listening. And I, I actually just hashtag something. I was uh, getting ready to post. You'll see it later. It's a reel. And the hashtag I put in, listen loudly. And I am, I'm going to run with this hashtag. And it, and it might be a thing. I don't, I don't know if it is. I just really, really liked it. Listen loudly. It's like a big expression of self. It's, it's really tuned in to the Holy Spirit. He wants to speak and everyone says that his voice is a still small whisper, but I found that in the middle, that hope component of the Trinity transformation, for me, it's integrity. We're gonna talk about it in just a second. This flip of the script that I, I created based on just live talking this morning on Peloton and Preach, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You gotta join me, it's so fun. I've had new followers come in and um, looking into leaning into a potential partnership with Peloton, which is going to be really cool. So just these are things that are happening and they wouldn't happen if I just hoped and looked at the Peloton and said, I should do that. I want to do that. I'll try to do that. No, grit associated to the hope is the outcome factor. It's the pivotal piece that you have to put into play. I just said lots of P's, pivotal place that you have to put into play in order for the outcome to exist. And so I'm sitting there and I'm processing this the, uh, live this morning on the Peloton and Preach. And I thought, you know, I like desire, hope, and grit. But one, it's somebody else's. And two, I feel like it's missing some elements, elements of rooted foundation that I've come to understand. And so I shifted it to intention, integrity, and interaction. And I named it because why not, right? Uh, my coach, Mike Zeller, that I started working with a year ago, almost to date, he says, you name and claim, you name and claim, and, and it becomes yours, and, and then you get to activate that based on your coaching, and so it's something I teach often as well. Um, I've always named and claimed my courses. I've named and claimed my coaching programs, um, some, so, some, some so much that when I went to do a branding experience with uh, one of the people who are associated with him, Ashley Preciato, she's amazing, and I think in the group, um, she, she was like, you realize you have seven brands, and I'm like, oh, heaven. <laughs> Like, don't tell my creative designer that. Morgan will kill me. But we do. We have so many brands within our brand because of the name and claim it method and also because of how people enter into the experience of your brand differently. So how does this parallel, right? I'm talking business here, but I'm also talking uh, foundation of goal setting and resolution and activation. And I think goal setting and resolutions isn't set on a specific date. I set my word over my birth year, not the calendar year, because what's the calendar anyway, right? You have an opportunity to do this right now. And so I named and claimed it the I am plan. And what I mean by the I am is obviously associated to the great I am because identity is the factor of all three of these next three I's that I'm going to mention um, and did mention. However, it's also a proclamation, right? I am doing this thing. It's the social contract that you might have heard me speak to before. Social contract is when you say it out loud and you tell your community, I'm going to do this thing. Like, I said, I'm going to do this Peloton and preach, right? I didn't commit to an exact amount of time that I was going to do it. I didn't commit to every day at six o'clock, but anytime I'm on the Peloton, I will be doing this thing and it'll be around 6 a.m. at 6 a.m. I've been on the nose every single time for the reason of, of cultivating consistency for you all and being the example, but intention was the declaration. I intend to. What do you want to do? What's the intention of your heart? What's the intention of your action? Because desire and um, Danelle Delgado, and I've actually heard a couple of other people, Patrice Washington this past week said it, um, the drug of hopium, right? People are hopped up on hopium. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. And if you parallel that to uh, Zig Ziglar's and Tom Ziglar's, Todd Ziglar's, oh my gosh, did I just say his name wrong? Anyway, his son, I think it's Tom, um, Ziegler's concept of hope. Hope is in the middle, right? And if we're hopium, if we're hoping that something's going to happen, it kind of, it shifts you away from what will be. 
And so intention, I believe, is spot on and it eliminates that what if factor. I intend to do this and therefore I will. The second piece to the I am plan is the integrity. So if I say and if I declare and if I intend to do something, will I be out of integrity if I don't do it? Now, of course, things fall as they may. Things will shift and change and maybe the idea evolves from the original intention. That's the always becoming factor, right? That's what my entire book was about, that we're always emerging, always changing, always growing. However, integrity is having someone say and see, it's similar to branding, like what you are, what they say about you when you're not in the room. Are you a woman or a man of integrity? Are you a woman or man of your word? And so integrity to me is so critical and integrity is surely an activation. Every single day I have to stand in alignment. And I say have to, and people will shift that into I get to, and both of those are true. Because when I step out of integrity, I step out of alignment, guess what happens? Not only is my intention jeopardized, my integrity is jeopardized with myself, and therefore things like guilt, shame, resentment, all of those will be a result of acting out of integrity. And I don't want to do that. I don't want you to do that. And so understanding and cultivating the who you truly are based in the identity factor of I am, the affirmations that God gives you in the word every day, I am worthy, I am called, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, right? And that's where your integrity is aligned. It's not hard when it's already been spoken over you. You're not raising your hand to something new. You're not trying to cultivate something outside of the intention that God has over your breath, over your life, over your purpose. And so the last part of the I am plan that is disassociated to grit, though I do like that word, is interaction. And what I mean by that is conversation. What I mean by that is relationship. What I mean by that is the ability for you to show up and interact even with self, even with God, even with energy, even with the world, secular included, in order to bring that to life, in order to manifest truth in the original intention and integrity of the statement, I am doing this. I am a conference host. I am a speaker. I am a teacher. I am a business coach. I am, I am, what are you? Drop it in the comments. I am what? I'm super curious what you think and believe that you are associated to your goals and your resolutions for the year. If you didn't see, we just launched a book anthology project. Last year, I got to say, I am a publisher. I get to publish people's books. It's amazing. I'm so excited about it. Fit Press is the name in case you haven't seen it. It's associated to the publishing, podcasting, and play understanding of Fit and Faith Media Co. It's what we do. It's what we've been doing for three years. And so I am a publisher. But this year, I am an anthology coordinator. I am an anthology writer. That's already been true for the last several years. But I'm so excited to invite other people into this conversation, into this I am declaration to say I am an author and I am believing I am a best-selling author. I want to hit, I will hit, we will hit, right? This understanding because of the collaboration, because of the interaction, not just because of the intention, because I could sit in intention all day long. I intend to do the thing and yet the time never comes. And therefore, because there's a social contract, because there's a website, because I already have authors enrolled in the program, I will stay in integrity with that truth, with that statement, and it will be what propels me every single day as I do every little bite-sized piece of the massive elephant of creating a book and an anthology with other authors. And therefore, the interaction, the connection point of all of us together and the connection points with the publishers, the formatting, all of the different people that go into play, the editors with this project, the interaction creates the result. Because you cannot do I am statements alone. The only reason that I am anything is with the support and the original intended desire of our Heavenly Father associated to the idea, associated to the dream. What do you think? What do you think? Do you want to be a best-selling author? Do you want to be a coach, a speaker? What are your goals this year? I'm super curious. 
We're now almost three weeks into the new year, and that means things are now likely, hopefully, in integrity, right? Ziegler would say hope, I would say integrity. Are you doing the thing you said you're gonna do? Are you activated? Are you in movement towards the interaction which will result in the outcome and the finality and the stamp of the I am? It's the I am plan. And I'm really excited to share with you guys first here and eventually it'll be in written format too, I'm sure. It'll be on my podcast. It's already on Peloton and Preach, so it'll be there too. But please know that I, I'm just jumping in here to say hi. I'm coming in to educate, to share. This is all stemmed. This entire 20-minute conversation is all stemmed from quiet time, creative space, thinking time is what another author calls it from the book called A Road to Less Stupid. Also an audible I'm listening to right now. Really good. You have to take the space. You have to actually dissect, digest from the fire hose of information that's coming at you on a continual basis and then deliver it. Deliver it in your own language. Deliver it in your own revelation. And without the thinking time between the receipt and the retrieval and then obviously the result, there has to be that thinking time between retrieval and result. And so this is the result of my quiet time today, and I think it's really rad. And I think I could create an entire program out of this. I think I could create uh, an entire keynote out of this, and I will. And so these are the things that are processing in my mind as I say yes to the thinking time and sharing it. I used to actually covet my ideas. I used to avoid the interaction piece of the I am plan. I was in intention. I was intentional. And at the same time, I was integral, and yet I was coveting. And you can't covet your ideas, y'all. There are people that God has positioned you, perhaps the live people who are here right now, who are intended to be a part. And if you inhibit that interaction, you're now your own roadblock. And so I, I wanted to share, and I can't wait to hear your feedback. And it looks like I might have live comments off. So for any of you that are here um, live, I see you. Ah, they removed, they moved it. I see Kelly. I see Leanne. Oh, yay. I see Liz. Oh, my friends. I love all of you guys. Oh my goodness. So much stuff. Integrity. Yes. It's inspiring. Kelly, I'm so glad it's inspiring. Using your gifts and talents to bring him glory. Yes, Liz. God strategically placing you in places of obediently walking out the calling of making disciples, even if it's a Peloton. That is right. It seems silly. It seems crazy, but wait till you see all the goodness. I still haven't taken the time to process everything from last week, but I am off work tomorrow. Yes. Oh my goodness, Leanne. Like I said, that reflection point is so critical for what's to come. Marcus, I see you, brother. Oh, this is so fun. I'm so glad that you guys were here. I hope that, that it met you. Again, um, reading the book was what prompted it, and then asking the Holy Spirit, what do you say about this? That's really one of the biggest reflection points and how I activate on a consistent basis and how I show up for you all. And so I am always uh, surrendering my mouth, surrendering my words, surrendering my spirit to the will of God. And so I hope that it just meets your heart, meets your head, meets your home, meets your handbag, right? And it meets your health. Those are my five like circle components. So Leanne, if you're listening, you saw so many people share wheels. You, you had them share the finances, the physical, the mental, the soul, the spirit, all these things, right? The body health, those are all super critical. I renamed them myself because I love a good alliteration. So it was originally called the 5H model, but I didn't like that because it doesn't mean anything to anyone. And so I dissected it a little bit more. I cultivated a bit more and it's now called the joy zone. And I feel like in order to be in the joy zone, you have to always be understanding of where you fall, where are you being ranked currently in the five H's. And so it does have a priority list. Unlike the wheel, a lot of people say that there is not one specific priority uh, based on a season, based on a day, based on a need. I disagree. Um, you cannot not put spirituality as number one. I've done that and I crashed and burned. And I know many people who have done the same. And so you have to prioritize heart. And then heart leads to head right? And the head is the mindset. Sure. If you want to call it that, it's the mental health. Yes. So it's a component of depression, anxiety, intention that we were just talking about is a huge part of the head, right? 
And so heart first, we know that out of our heart, our mouth will speak. And therefore, that is a component of head and it's a component of our thoughts. Our heart will direct that. And though we know that our heart can be deceitful and that's actual scripture from the Bible, if we are connected and the thing that's fueling us is the Holy Spirit, it changes everything. And the things that come out of your mouth are gratitude and the things that come out of your mouth are word and the things that come out of your mouth are worship and warfare and alignment stems from there. And so then after head comes health. And I say health before home, and I've flip-flopped it home to health sometimes as well. But I really believe that health is that component of body. And when I am tired, when I'm not getting sleep, when I am not fueling my body correctly, a lot of things transpire and trickle off of that that keep me inhibited from being my best, joyful, spirited, free dancing, strong mama self. Right? I can't give to my husband in the same way because I am physically depleted and therefore sexually depleted. This is real talk, y'all, right? It's so critical. And so heart, then head, then health, then home. Because if I prioritize home, and this is what a lot of women do, right? We're, we're nurturers, we take care of everybody else first. These are messages, if you were at the Align Conference, you might've heard, but this is a different perspective. Because it's not take care of this, 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 this. It's, it's a prioritization of. And that is alignment. And there are things that are often said or read or heard that if you don't put them in position of what does God say about this, it's going to fall on deaf ears or it's going to fall on a spirit that's receiving it wrongly and therefore activated inappropriately. And then this entire Trinity transformation conversation that we're having wouldn't work. It wouldn't work because you'd be pursuing the wrong thing in the wrong time with the wrong sense of energy. And so if you're hustling really hard over your health right now, because it was told that that's a really good near resolution or a really good goal, it's noble for sure. But are you prioritizing that? Is it becoming a false idol? I'm in the middle of a fast right now. I've got a few more days of a 21 day fast that my church is participating in. I've done this every year for the last couple of years. This past year one was really hard, but it has a really cool outcome, a really good testimony associated to it because I just surrendered a lot of things that I didn't think I could. And this time I did the same, but I honestly haven't even thought about it. And yet the reason I haven't thought about it is because my spiritual alignment, the, the first thing, that heart space that I wake up to every single day is very different than it was last year, which seems crazy. I couldn't think that I could love Jesus any more than I do, but here I am. Here you are. And that's the seeking and knowing and finding, right? So I'm telling you the joy zone. I didn't know I was going to talk about it, but why not? Here we are. And we talked about heart. We talked about head. We talked about health. We talked about home. Don't allow yourself as a mama to put the babies and the husband and the friends and the job and all these other things first and forget about yourself. Don't say, I'll do that if there's time. Time is of the essence, friend. Time is limited. I wake up as early as I do, and for those that know me, you know early is early. Sometimes as early as 3.30, but usually before 4.30 in that gap of window. It's bananas. If you had told me I was going to do that forever, oh, you're going to wake up at 3.30 on a regular basis, I would have thought you were bananas. Right, But that's just when God speaks to me. It's the time that is sacred. I fuel myself in that time so that when my home lights turn on and they come downstairs and I hear the little pitter-pattering, I can be fully present. And I'm operating as a conduit. I don't even say overflow anymore. That's what I used to say until I was corrected by the one and only Pastor Anthony. Because overflow means at some point I am depleted and I'm not connected anymore. Right? And honestly, at the overflow, at some point, there's less than for yourself. And if I'm constantly giving everybody else the overflow, what do I have to drink? And so being a conduit is like being a funnel, soaking in his goodness and allowing myself to be a conduit for other people to receive, but never running dry. It's the example of being planted by the river. That, that tree is never void or vacant of nutrition of nourishment because it's planted in the right place. 
And so that is what I hope you can be. And remember, hope is connected to action. And therefore, when you prioritize these things, as I'm mentioning, the joy that so many people see in me as a natural gift and talent, it's not natural. Sure, there's a light, there's an energy, there's a love, and it's been magnified since coming to know Jesus in a way I never knew possible. But it doesn't turn off because the camera's off. It doesn't turn off because the lights go dim. It doesn't turn off because the stage isn't there. It doesn't turn off even when my body is resting because of the prioritization, because of the ability to be a conduit. And then lastly is the handbag of the joy zone. And, and this is honestly what a lot of people prioritize, right? They prioritize money. They prioritize the things of this world. They prioritize their clothes. They prioritize their car. They prioritize their house. You know how many people are driving around right now in very expensive cars that they can't afford? Or they're living in houses that are completely creating a, a deficit to their bank account. Now, I'm a believer in real estate. I'm a believer in all of those things and, and creating uh, financial security for yourself and legacy. But we have to live within our means before God provides more to our means. We have to be stewards of our finances. We have to be stewards of the gifts that we have right now without putting false idols in front of them. I joke, and yet I am dead serious. So I say often, I'll say, in a lighthearted manner because I don't know what will be, but I am intentionally and in integrity pursuing a private jet. That sounds crazy, right? I was, I was joking at a mastermind and I was like, oh yeah, I want that PJ. And one of the gals was like, wait, what? Whoa, that's another level to finances than I think all of us are desiring. You want a private jet. I'm like, I do. Now, how do I get there? It's one step at a time, but it's in integrity. And the reason I want it isn't for me to just go plane hopping island to island. It's to bring the masses the interaction of the people and the family that I'm associated to, they will be on the plane with me. When we go to the nations as we're called to do, they will be on the plane with me. My children, my family, my husband, they will be on the plane with me. And financially, in the long run, it's the right thing to do. It makes the most sense. It's the safe thing to do. And therefore, why not? So it's not a matter of not thinking big or wanting big things or desiring large, massive outcomes, even in your business. I want those things for you too, but it's not about the number in your bank account. It's about the number you can give because of your bank account. It's about the change that you can create, the impact, the legacy that you can leave because of the overflow of your bank account. Again, it shifts from overflow to conduit. What if your bank account was a conduit? What if the moment it went in, it went out? That's what I've been doing in this business for the last four years. And I'll tell you, it's proven hard at times. I've felt void. I've felt empty, but God has never failed me once. He's never failed my team once. And so when I ask them to trust me, even though it doesn't look like any of the numbers are going to add up or nothing is going to go to fruition or the outcome of the new uh, launch didn't happen the way that we had hoped, God always perseveres. He always comes out on top. He always wins. And it's a component of my intention that allows that to be true and the language in which I stand in every single day. It's the fuel in which my heart set creates continued embers for other people. And that's because of the prioritization of spirituality first, heart first, God first, Jesus over everything. It's not a wheel, y'all. It's an alignment. That's the variation. That's the variation of teaching that you often see. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot do it any other way. And I'm speaking specifically just for my testimony, and you guys know that. And if you don't, you can read my book, and you'll find out all the good details. <laughs> Always becoming sex, shame, and love gives you enough dirty secrets on the cover to make you understand where the fail point was, where the trigger points are, where they were, and where they might be. And so I'm very aware of all of those things, and you have to be too. But the final word, love, capital L, unlike the ones before it, those that 
it he is the prioritization it's the most important piece it covers all and I just have to stay in that space and so do you so come hang out with me on Peloton and preach if you like this I'm there at 6 a.m. every day ideally that I am in town I am on there Clubhouse or IGTV and if you miss it you can catch it later you can catch some replays and you can also catch some clippings that the one and only creative designer Morgan Hart puts together and also Janice will snag and put into email so if you're not on the email list uh, we send out regular information so the algorithm doesn't bump us out of queue and yeah that's a bit about what we've got going on if you want to say at the end of the year that i am a best-selling author the anthology is a perfect way for you to get started on that journey we'll also have a book writing retreat later this year for those who aren't interested in the anthology but want to either self-publish or publish with fit press lots of things in queue and of course grow for god i cannot wait for it growforgod.com all tickets are available now we are still securing a venue in nashville which has also proven quite difficult as there are musicians and weddings there all the time so if you guys have any ins or ideas um, it also is a cap on numbers a lot of them aren't over 300 and we are going to pack the house so it's been an adventure but yeah my intention is that it's still going to be big and I stand in integrity in the vision of what God has given me. Therefore, I activate and the interaction that will be on the outskirts of that, which is the multiple hundred people that are in the room is going to be magnificent and it'll be worth the investment of time, energy and grit that it's taking to get there. I love you guys so much. I hope you have an amazing day. I'm so glad we got to chat today unintentionally and yet fully with intention. Love you guys. Chat soon.